Samsung's QD OLED TV, which is receiving much attention from the public, seems to have hidden technical problems that we are not well aware of. Today's video was a summary of the fact that the structure is quite different from the commonly known QD OLED and that it casts a dark shadow on the direction it should go. Now, let's start the tech trip. According to what is known so far, QD OLED is based on a blue OLED consisting of three layers, and it converts blue light emitted from each OLED subpixel into green and red using quantum dots to create RGB color, the three primary colors of light. White OLED is also based on three-layer OLED, so there are many similarities in the process except that QD OLED forms a separate quantum dot layer and uses only blue OLED. As a result, it was expected that an additional 20% or so of process cost would be added to panel production, and I thought that such an increase in price could be compensated for with relatively superior performance. However, as a few people pointed out in several comments on my video, the rumor that QD OLED was released with a 4-stack structure rather than a 3-stack structure seems to be no longer a secret anymore. And the display-related industry must have disassembled Alienware's QD OLED monitor, which has already been released, and completed the structural analysis of the 4-stack. More specifically, it is the fact that the current performance is achieved by using a 4-stack structure consisting of 3 layers of blue and 1 layer of green. The reason for using the 4-stack is probably the possibility that it was difficult to obtain the desired efficiency with the 3-stack structure, and the method used to remove at least one QD layer including the scattering layer to minimize the decrease in the contrast ratio mentioned in the previous video. So why would a 4-stack structure be a problem? In fact, from the consumer's point of view, it doesn't matter what the internal structure is as long as the performance is good. However, the fact that QD OLED has a more complex structure than expected would be quite embarrassing for the panel maker. Even if it is not, it will be quite burdensome to have to increase the number of layers again in addition to the process and yield management difficulties coming from the highly difficult top emission format, the process cost and material cost burden of making a separate quantum dot layer. Can QD OLED compete with white OLED with such a complex structure? In addition, if the number of layers of OLED in the equipment already given increases by 30% due to the introduction of the four-layer structure, it would be a big burden to have to reduce the annual production by that much. In the meantime, I have devoted a lot of my video to the merits of QD OLED in future development prospects, but the current situation is making me feel strongly that those expectations can be turned back to vague hopes. Conversely, if QD OLED uses the originally known three-layer structure instead of the four-layer structure that is currently used, the lifespan, efficiency, and brightness will be lower than the current level. Even with three layers, the panel production cost is relatively high, but there is no performance advantage? Which consumers will accept it? More complexity, it would have had no choice but to choose a four-layer structure for differentiation. Perhaps this is the reason why Samsung Electronics was reluctant to introduce QD OLED in the beginning and talked about the production volume not being able to cover as much as they wanted. Even if the initial production cost is about 20% higher, it offsets it with excellent performance and uses the advantages of the front light emitting method to increase the aperture ratio and improve durability, remove the circular polarizer and improve efficiency through the introduction of the pixel defined layer applied to the Galaxy S22. However, the current four-stack structure is making the journey feel a bit far-fetched. Above all, it is disappointing that the current situation seems to be that the combination of blue OLED and quantum dot with a three-layer structure did not ensure sufficient performance, so it was inevitable to introduce a green layer. This reality will have no choice but to further solidify the strategy of positioning the Neo QLED that Samsung Electronics wants to set on the top in the future. The possibility that Samsung Electronics white OLED purchase-related rumors that have been raised over and over are more likely to be just rumors, and Samsung Electronics Neo QLED will be strengthened even more to confront white OLED. Perhaps internally, not only Samsung Electronics, but also the highest level of the group were clearly aware of this fact, and it is highly likely that the full-scale investment plan for QD OLED announced in the past has been put on hold. 
At least, if the currently announced QD OLED performance cannot be secured quickly to secure price competitiveness with white OLED, additional investment will be opaque. In the next video, we will talk about technical analysis of why Samsung Display had no choice but to go to a four-stack structure. We end today's video with the hope that Samsung Display will find a solution to this problem as soon as possible. Goodbye.